first uh, paper who owns the data uh, because uh, the author himself or herself calls that uh, the data is a new production and production in the neoliberal system is actually differentiated. Uh, obviously it is not with the public. So once actually you use the production data as a production, logically you fall in the trap where actually you go to the neoliberal system or today's where the data becomes private. And then asking for the uh, coming back to the uh, government, again going back to the, the those kind of capitalism, which was a different kind from the neoliberal capitalism. So the argument which actually I thought that in the beginning it need to be sustained. Uh, uh, because this this logically need to be beat through. Uh, uh, second thing, uh, uh, what I felt that uh, uh, in the present context, uh, because because of the new liberal capitalism which we have today, uh, the author can mobilize more ethical and moral questions rather than going to the production and non-production. Because uh, the data has become differentiated groups also, the data has become uh, uh, a different kind of production. Uh, uh, even CMI is producing, we are producing, everybody is producing and it depends on the spheres of production and spheres of use. So the everything cannot be owned by the public or actually the government, and uh, 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 that is where the moral and ethical question becomes important: the data privacy and data regulation. And I think that that where the logic need to be coming from the paper, rather than actually uh, 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 pushing forward that data is public or government or anything, because that way uh, I think that uh, we are in different system now. It is not actually socialist. Uh, second thing, the darker pattern, AI generated persuasions. Uh, 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 th that way, uh, I mean, it's a good analysis in many ways. Uh, but what I felt that it is mostly coming from the larger understanding how the function functions, rather than having newness anything. So newness need to be really brought in. Uh, that if we have that, whether you have found any consumer using that. One, two case studies, if you can bring as a ethnography or anything, that will be very good because that we need the evidence for that. Uh, uh, adequacy of evidence are missing in the data. So uh, that is where actually we read. Again, I say that there are many things which are known already. The papers are looking for something new. I mean, we are looking for something new. And that is actually new evidence which is uh, you as an author bring out. So that that what I felt that you have brought many important things, but as a newness, uh, nothing uh, originality. Uh, I felt that this is missing, or actually it need to be brought in a different way so that uh, it, it it becomes a new. Third paper, very quickly, uh, will the EU, uh, EU AI regulation give rise to excellent paper? I must say that uh, uh, very well argued. Uh, what I say that paper can be further strengthened if actually some of the points which actually have raised can be tabulated and actually analyzed further because this is a policy analysis and I felt that the the few points which actually you have yourself pointed out as an author, uh, if you can tabulate and uh, multiple policies which have come out and what is the implication for the new, I mean uh, for the different countries, how they are adapting. For example, uh, limited risk to the public, how actually uh, different things actually presenting different uh, categories of technologies and what kind of regulations. Uh, uh, then you have uh, high risk and then you have uh, unacceptable risk. So if you uh, yeah. do the analysis in those are uh, multiple axes, so you can analyze and I think that it, it can be tabulated, then become sharper and more understandable as actually uh, can become. But I, I, it was impressive paper uh, from uh, 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 For the book review, I uh, say that yes, there's a need to really look at the critically the book. Uh, uh, many things came out well, but critically, uh, slightly more critical that what it is missing. Uh, actually, is there something in general or actually what is for the future? Uh, fifth, I come to the bias in algorithm, obje uh, objections raised in the facial recognition system. The two, three things which actually I could not understand that, uh, I mean, we have used the facial recognition systems and other. Uh, there are uh, multiple technologies which actually are sometimes raw and non-tested. 
and sometimes non-tested recognition system may create uh, uh, multiple problems. Uh, uh, but there are uh, uh, technologies which where actually you uh, give your facial uh, uh, images and they recognize you. So it depends on the kind of feeding you have done. Problem lies uh, the, with the algorithm. In the algorithm, if for example in the bank if you go and somebody identifies you that you are a Muslim and I will not give you. And you are scheduled caste, I will not give you. You are from the that kind of thing which you cannot offer for collateral, I will not give you. These images are basically made like actually how much uh, you are able to feed that and then they are able to revert you back. So it depends on the kind of uh, uh, way, uh, I mean, uh, you have created the algorithm and better created algorithm will give you better result. But the, basically we are concerned which actually the algorithm bias and actually uh, discrimination that where it identifies you and positively identifies you that you are there, I mean proper way. But it leads to a bias in the system that I have identified X as this, so I have biases against X, then X will lead to the that I will not give you the benefit. That is the crucial thing, not actually the technical, technical error. Technical error may crop in and the people who are creating, they also know that they are technical errors. And that technical errors can be corrected several times in the uh, putting our uh, I mean, uh, thumbs for the biometric, we feel that this is happening. But it does not mean that it is biased against you. So there is a trouble that we need to really have the larger logical question rather than this question in the system. And if we can do that, will be wonderful. So that part what I felt is missing in that one. Towards localizing public health information system, nothing to say that is a, um, I mean, it's very much needed. In fact, I was reminded by Carl, uh, Michael Polanyi, who says that official systems are localized systems. No centralized system, artificial system, but today that is where the problem emerges uh, that this uh, argument needs to be really grounded further. Given that digital technologies, we say that there is a death of space and death of distance and death of time. Uh, because the localization and centralization and initially was problematized in geography and sociology or in economics from the distance. And this de death of the distance, death of decay, death of the time, and temporality, speciality, and sociality is all are changing. Or there is a consequences for the localization also. Or actually the Michael Polanyi's argument is valid that decentralized system or other system. So this is where the argument actually I think that will be bringing, uh, they will become sharper. Thank you. Who owns data? Uh, I think um, here uh, we need to um, see where uh, who uses uh, the data here. I think the mention of uh, uh, use of data by politicians and other uh, agencies has not been mentioned. Wherein I think a lot of uh, politicians use these data to manipulate crowds, to manipulate uh, a lot of uh, people. Mm. I think only brands are being uh, uh, targeted, whereas a uh, lot of uh, people use, uh, especially the politicians and the bureaucrats use this data to manipulate a lot of policies, a lot of uh, uh, things at the national and the state level. First, uh, one which was on who owns the data. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very tricky thing. Uh, um, so, where do you draw the line? Because knowledge is socially constructed. So, whether it's being constructed inside a computer or it's being you know, socially constructed within you know, the, the, the the collective of human intelligence, where do you draw the line of whose data it is? And that's an important thing. For example, I mean, you know, if I'm Amitabh Bachchan and somebody uses my face, I would ask them to charge, I mean, I'd want them to you know, pay me money. But on the other hand, if I'm Ajat Faran, my data is, and my face is, you know, anybody's property. And, you know, you can use it, you can train data. So, more specifically, you're 
creating something of value. For example, if you look at OpenAI, it's worth billions of dollars, and it's this worth is coming from the data that it was trained on, which they got for free. So, and if they hadn't got these data, this data for free, there's no way which they could have done this. So, so that's one thing to uh, think. By the way, I got completely thrown off by this dark pattern business. The examples that you gave were not of dark patterns at all. They were the 1990s way of tricking people into buying stuff. The persuasion which happens now is of a very different category. Okay, You are shown the same images relentlessly over and over again. For example, of Israelis being, you know, uh, of, of Israeli children being, you know, yeah. injured and and that, that's the only thing that they'll show you and they'll keep showing you until you are basically drawn into that you know, particular hellhole. So, uh, and, and how they do it is very important. For example, what they'll do is they'll look at your profile. Okay, you're a 50 year old male with children who are teenagers, so you're bothered about them. As a result, they'll only show you of teenagers being killed by Hamas or something like that. I mean, you know, if you want to be pursued that way or if you're, you know, if, if, if you're a young person, they'll probably, you know, have a young girl telling you about, you know, the politics of the place. So, it's far more subtle than what the presenter was talking about. Okay, then about uh, the Brussels effect. Uh, I think there was, there was too much uh, of a bother from uh, the author about India's market. They were really bothered, you know, how will the Indian market grow or, you know, what will happen? Which is, which needs to be examined critically. Why are we bothered about the Indian market and not about Indians themselves? So, um, th that criticality was missing actually in a number of other papers as well, but I'm pointing it out especially here because the paper had assumed that the markets were all important. And in order for the market to progress, for us to have exports, etc., etc., there are things that we need to do. I mean, that itself was not bad. And now, bias in the algorithm was the title of this paper, and that itself is problematic. The bias is in the data. Mm, exactly. There is no algorithm. There is no algorithm in AI. Yeah. It's just the data which trains you to do things. So you're giving certain data, and because you know you're just giving a lot of white main data, that's what it knows, and it thinks that you know the whole world is mm -hmm. so. It's called hallucination in AI. That is, you basically assume some things to be true, which are you know patently false. So that this is what I'm saying. That you use the terms properly, and I'm just giving this as an example of that. Um, then um, public health. Um, one thing I think which is very required. I mean, okay, health will in future be informed not only at the policy level, but also at the level of medical progress, of, of progress of medical science will be driven entirely by the data that you feed in now. Okay, whether it is to discover new drugs, whether it is to you know discover protocols, etc., it will all come from data. So it's important that the data is used, but how do you, you anonymize this data is a, is a critical thing. So I, I, I think you know that's one thing which uh, was not pointed out by the paper, but you know, that's all I have to say. As my previous uh, uh, colleague had just said, that why not think of data as the new commodity, as the new source of value, and, and to kind of understand what makes it valuable for different users. Uh, the means of production idea can also, because I'm taking this more as a scoping paper, which kind of sort of tries to present uh, a summary of the broader issues uh, and that can be a very, if properly done, that can be a very useful, uh, I think, contribution. <coughs> data as the source of value itself, as the new commodity, uh, is something that you can probably try to incorporate. Um, this question about bias in the facial recognition system, I think it has been commented on that bias is, is when there is some source of prejudiced led miscategorization or misrepresentation or mischaracterization of uh, of people with certain qualities or or something like that there, there is some some sort of mischaracterization for for me to make it a bias now 
uh, I think just going as as I think two uh, uh, the viewers have already said. What is the problem here is the nature of the repository on basis of which the recognition takes place. Now, why doesn't it work efficiently for marginal groups? Is it simply, I mean, I don't know, I don't know computer science enough to say that it, is it because you have 20 images in, the, in your database as against 100? And that's what is making it, I mean, broadly, is that what it is? But then, in some sense, that's going to happen, right? If, if a group is, unless there is some sort of a threshold beyond which the machine will start doing things correctly. Because if the minority is 5% of your population, you can never have enough to match up with the majority images, if you just simply, unless you just aim for some threshold that we should at least have 100,000 images. I mean, from all the images, people. some people don't have fingerprints. Right. I mean, right. Yeah. Right. So, what right. with the other right. part of those right. So, I think that one needs to really unpack that idea a little bit because here clearly the, the all sorts of either other biases which might creep in after, you know. In, in, in surveillance footage, etc., is not what is happening here. Right. If anything, it's something different. So one needs to like use it with some care. I'm not saying nothing is there, but it needs to be understood. And lastly, in terms of the health uh, database question, I think it's a very interesting point raised by the first reviewer about how uh, input site information is also very valid, as is outcome-based uh, indicators, or as are outcome-based indicators. But the question is that do you, this idea of localization, I mean, I don't think there is any, any debate or dispute about healthcare decisions, healthcare delivery taking place at the local level. I think one needs to distinguish between what you seem to be saying about data being, of course it's being generated at the local level, but data being used at the local level by local expertise, by local agencies, by local uh, you know, uh, officials. That clearly is not happening, but is that what you really want? Because that would need, among other things, a whole set of local level infrastructure which is not simply about recording the data it's also about human resources to analyze the data to kind of make sense of it because otherwise what you have at the level of one under Mari are hundreds of data points being so I give you the key I mean I'm, I'm sure there is somebody who, who has access to that at least that part of the database but what do I do with it I mean, that really is a question of then developing analytical infrastructure at that level and that for a country like India, I don't even know how feasible and given the invisibility, how, how, much, of a, how much of a priority that should be, but just something to keep in mind. I'm not going to point out each of them because there's no time, but I just wanted to say congratulations to some of you. Your analysis is amazing and you're raising really important current issues that many people around the world are struggling with, are trying to find answers. And I hope that you can also connect with other researchers that are looking into that in other countries. Um, I just, I was in Brazil about three weeks ago. There was this conference organized by the UN University uh, program on e-governance. And a lot of the researchers there were looking at exactly the same questions that many of you are looking from different countries' perspectives, but a lot about this question on public service delivery, the role of the state, the role of uh, institutions like academia as researchers, the role of private sector, the role of civil society, but very much around 
this whole idea of public services in a digitized world, right? Where you kind of lose a little bit of the control of how data is used, but also understanding better the responsibility of delivering public services, public goods, over digital platforms that are not always public. In fact, they are for the most part not public at all and are not uh, governed by public resources that keep humans and every single person in every country's rights respected.